if you have watched one or two of my videos from earlier this year, my mini Camino on the Camino de Santiago in northern Spain, you may have heard me say uh, something about my mm, wish, desire, ambition, expectation perhaps, um, to move to a tiny house. Well, that time is fast approaching. It's not a recent thing, this this move towards living simpler, off-grid. The first time I knew I really fancied living in um, a tiny house, or before then it was a log cabin, and before then it was a tree house. And what inspired me was, I don't know if you remember the um, film with Hayley Mills and John Mills, Swiss Family Robinson, where they were shipwrecked and they built their own treehouse and repelled the pirates. Well, that must have lodged somewhere in my psyche uh, because that's what I'm going to do. Uh, not repel pirates, you understand, or uh, indeed build a treehouse. Although I have considered, <laughs> well, I'll show you later, building a log cabin, as if, um, but that was my, perhaps, uh, that's what lit the blue touch paper of my coconut bomb. And it stayed with me since. Um, so it's not a flash in the pan and it's not a, a, a later in life sort of life transformation. It's been a slow burner to this point. Um, and you can see from my uh, list of bookmarks um, ferreted away, squirreled away. Um, over the past 10 years really I have uh, kept an eye on what's happening in the um, living off grid stroke tiny house world. You may not uh, appreciate this but if you search on YouTube for tiny house living there, there are many um, hundreds of um, videos about people who have made the move from regular living to tiny house living, which it, of course is very inspiring. There's even one um, YouTube channel from New Zealand, uh, I think it's called Living Big in a Tiny House, and I think it, that channel has something like 4 million subscribers, of which I am one. So this has also sort of whetted the appetite in the past year, year or so. And now it's, it's time for me to have my own adventure in a tiny house. Um, I have had um, some experience before, um, so I'm not a complete newbie um, with the idea. Uh, the first experience was um, I rented a fishing cabin in the woods in Cumbria uh, about 10 years ago, I would say. Um, not least because the fishing cabin is actually called Shanks's Cabin. And it was a genuine log cabin, no hot water, only a cold water pump inside, log burning stove and uh, a bunk not a bunk bed but a sort of a, a loft bed and I absolutely loved it. Uh, I got up early naturally in the morning and uh, like Mark Twain I think I picked up my fishing rod and went to the stream, a little river at, just at the end of the of where the log cabin was and I attempted to catch my catch my food and only managed to succeed in falling in the river. But that gave me an appetite and just in the past year I've had two further mini adventures. Well really the first one was a mini mini adventure. Uh, in fact it was one night adventure in a shepherd hut in a field in the middle of nowhere off Offers Dyke in Wales. If you look at my uh, earlier videos, you will see I recorded a brief video on my 24 hours in a shepherd's hut, which I thoroughly enjoyed. 
uh, started to learn the importance of keeping things simple when you're in a tiny space. And my most recent experience in a, a tiny house, well, actually, um, correct that, a shed in a field in Lanzarote. I went back to Lanzarote, my favourite island where I used to live this summer. The first week I actually spent in uh, a field, a lava field, not far from uh, the nudist uh, resort actually. It was more of a shed than a, a tiny house with a bedroom and uh, which you had to walk around and a, a perfectly serviceable bathroom and I spent a, a very pleasant week in the sunshine on Lanzarote. What I thought uh, I would do is I would share with you some thoughts uh, which I noted down whilst I was on my mini Camino earlier this year. A great inspiration for living this dream of living in a tiny house or as I've said earlier it really started off as living in a log cabin. When I went to this uh, as I say this fishing cabin in in the woods in Cumbria, uh, Shanks Cabin, I took with me this book um, Henry David Thoreau's Walden, Life in the Woods, where um, in Connecticut he built his own log cabin and lived in it for two years, two months and two days. And uh, this book um, is an account of that. And I was so um, enthralled by it. Um, I read it in my in the, in my log cabin for a, a week, just le less than a week, and I underlined just about every other sentence in it. I was so inspired because it's not just about uh, a lifestyle; it's a sort of a, a philosophy of life. Um, you might say that the the core question of philosophy, not just for academic philosophers, but practical philo philosophers like you and I, lovers of life or lovers of wisdom, is how to live. And uh, Henry David Thoreau really pulls the rug on most of the conventions of modern society. <laughs> you might be amused, I'm amused, to see that um, I actually did sketch out what my uh, log cabin would look like. Those dimensions are actually the dimensions of um, Thoreau's log cabin and I thought I could um, make an attempt and, and do the same and I even looked up the lengths and prices of wooden telegraph poles that we have here in Britain which keeps our telephone wires hanging and yes <laughs> I did um, seriously consider doing it myself and I worked out the costings and um, 32 poles of the required length would cost me £1,120 and I reckoned uh, my budget for my log cabin um, finished was about £20,000. Well, uh, in another video shortly you will actually see uh, how much it actually cost not the log cabin, the tiny house. So I'm on, uh, I'm on the commute, Camino, my mini Camino in northern Spain, um, thinking about my move to, I thought it would be a log cabin, and asked myself, log cabin, why? Number one, um, live simply. Uh, what does that mean? live simply. Well, um, if I tell you that I have moved house 20 times in fewer than that years, in about 12 years, all for good reasons, nobody's chasing me, not yet anyway, and I got to the point where I could uh, pack up um, in four hours and uh, my secret to uh, a quick house move 
is to get four large throws or blankets and in one put all your clothes, uh, in another put all your kitchen things, in another put all your other tranquilments and the rest for me was books. So when I moved to Lanzarote I divested myself of half of my clothes and belongings and books, um, added to them of course when I was on Lanzarote I thought I would live there forever. Um, but then after two years I decided to come back to the UK and so again split the pack. I just about halved my belongings then, both uh, clothes and books, of course added to them and every time I've moved I've probably simplified but then um, of course you get comfortable wherever you choose to live, where you come to rest and you add all sorts of uh, very lovely objects like the, uh, the framed music posters behind me and my tin amps sign which I used to take with, with me to Olympia and other trade exhibitions selling my lovely tin amps, the, the speakers in a tobacco tin. But things accumulate and um, I notice that whenever I move, usually you handle everything, um, it passes through your hands and there's like um, an energetic charge in every single thing and the, and the process of moving to me uh, was like a, b a battery running down. Um, every object seemed to have some sort of psychological charge to me anyway and so cutting down and living more simply seems a sensible strategy. Um, I think there's now a, a term for this lifestyle, I think it's called minimalism and uh, there are psychological benefits as well as financial benefits of living more simply. Number two, be kind to the planet. A tiny house, tiny carbon footprint hopefully and also a um, uh, very good quality compost, uh, human compost. Uh, the first question that anybody asks when I tell them I'm, I want to move to a tiny house is what, what about the toilet and I intend it to be a composting toilet. The liquid goes down public uh, toilet but the solids uh, you, uh, you keep them no, not, not in the tiny house, you understand, but you build a, a compost heap. You might, add, uh, you might add wood shavings, you might even have nice smelling pine wood shavings. But it's remarkably benign human dung and uh, it's good on your carrots or <laughs> not, not, not on your plate, you understand, in the field. And so um, you can find a perfectly healthy, sensible place to dispose of your compost. We're coming up to another COP20, I think it's COP27 this weekend, but a year ago in Glasgow it was COP26. And I had to think about what on earth am I doing practically to save the planet? Answer, not a lot recycling my plastic is frankly about as conscientious as I got. Um, so I made a little video and sent it to my two kids apologizing for not doing more to save the planet and said that th this time uh, at COP26 my contribution would be um, to stop eating red meat uh, which I have done more or less for the past year. Um, occasionally I will have a, a, a kebab or a, a burger if I so fancy, if I'm at a festival or something, but part of my reason for wanting to go small is to be kind to the planet. Third reason, quiet. Um, as you know I'm here in Bakewell because I work with John Butler on his spiritual unfoldment meditation videos and will continue to do so. So my daily practice includes um, an hour's meditation with John in Bakewell Parish Church here at six o'clock. He goes earlier, five o'clock, 
but uh, that's far too early for me. I'm a, a meditator light and uh, can only manage an hour in the mornings. Some people who know me might find this uh, surprising or or indeed contradictory, but I mostly live a quiet life. <laughs> it sounds odd saying it. Uh, I, d I do mostly live a quiet life um, here in Bakewell, and um, there is that saying, all the troubles in the world are caused by a man's inability to stay in his room alone. Number four, contemplation, which I, I've touched on. Number five, right. You might have... Uh, caught me saying on previous videos that I am really enjoying my writing course uh, with Natalie Goldberg and the first fruits of that although it's the purpose of the course is specifically not to produce a book but I have um, that I shall, I shall be I shall get a black mark from Natalie for that but as a result of um, enjoying the writing. I have the writing practice. I've turned it into a book, E45, Topical Applications for the Human Condition, which is um, a series of um, autobi autobiographical anecdotes. Um, and each one has got a little meter. Um, it says it comes with, uh, contains MBS, Mind, Body, Spirit, and it invites the reader just to sort of do a reflective rain check on their mind and body spirit level uh, at the beginning of each chapter. So um, 45 daily applications, you can see how your mood and... Uh, perspective on life changes. Anyway, that is available on the Five Paths website link in the description below. So um, I can now, um, I think, call myself a writer. In fact, um, my intention with a tiny house, when it comes along, is to write my work in progress which is called mistaken identity so I am a writer and I am applying to the Arts Council in England and Wales for um, a contribution towards a project I am calling um, In Your Right Mind W-R-I-T-E which um, shares what I've learned from my uh, writing course with Natalie Goldberg and David Sedaris, but also um, 25 years of journal writing um, for the mental health benefits of simply writing on the page, pen on paper, getting it out there, or as Natalie Goldberg calls it in her book, writing down the bones. So um, I am convincing myself that whereas I might not feel inclined to write here in the comfort of my cottage somehow in the confined space of a tiny house it will all come flowing out yes of course it will number six apocalypse oh what what are we looking at apocalypse when are we when are we looking at it apocalypse now it this this weekend as, as i've said is cop 27 and we are going to cop it it seems. I've just read this morning Jem Bendel's essay. It is already too late to stop a chain reaction and we're already witnessing f storms and fires. The results of climate change which affects us all, every country, every society, every age group. I must confess, just talking about it now, it sounds as though a um, my response to COP27 is a cop out and um, going off grid in a tiny house and there is some justification for that accusation. I suppose um, my it's interesting isn't it I do feel I, I feel the need to justify my uh, my choice 
because it is a very positive choice to go off grid in a in a tiny house it's got both a positive and a negative energy about it um, from a positive point of view it's um, my intention to if, if, if this doesn't sound too uh, woolly to fulfill my calling to with a will um, do my writing with a will to um, be less demanding of the planet um, to live more simply to live more quietly um, at a recent conference uh, down in Dorset um, over lunch I was speaking to a Chinese woman and calligrapher and author prize-winning author who who I discussed this issue of the the challenge of um, what you might call spiritual activism I actually bought a book of that title which I, of course I haven't read so uh, so much for my spiritual activism but she knew what it was like to experience a revolution in China and talking to her about how to what's what what can we do when we're faced with what seems to me a very uncivil society and it's only going to get more polarized and uh, I talked a little bit about my writing and she her best advice to me was tend your garden she doesn't mean literally my garden of leeks and potatoes she means tend my garden plot of my writing and so that's what I have chosen to do um, that's the positive aspect the if you like the negative energy associated with choosing to move to a tiny house off grid is honestly um, voting with my feet um, with my life actually um, insofar as I, I don't want to be an accomplice to what I see as an increasingly uncivil and polarized society so I don't want to contribute to that so um, I'm moving seven contentment and eight fewer distractions of course we're all social animals and uh, we enjoy um, our coffee shops I certainly do I'm very glad of chakra just at the end of my alley here but it seems to me that um, the more engaged we are with the currents particularly in Britain at the moment the political currents um, the more angry <laughs> it is very easy to become and again I, I really hope it's not a question of bypassing or avoidance um, but um, living a, a simpler quieter life um, hopefully will lead to fewer distractions and more contentment less stuff well um, for me that applies in particular to books we've all experienced that um, extra stuff doesn't make you extra happy and less stuff actually um, seems to conserve your uh, or seems to increase your happiness quotient 10 no aspiration well that's an interesting one um, I don't know if you do this but at every turn of the year in my journal I write a page or more of what I've been grateful for for the previous year travels uh, yes books I've read perhaps people in my life um, and then um, maybe a few bullet points on um, intentions let's call them intentions or aspirations for the coming year well a couple of years ago I found myself writing um, this year I want to achieve nothing and um, it was very successful <laughs> I uh, achieved nothing whilst at the same time um, everything seemed to take care of itself um, and uh, in, in particular the the YouTube channel spiritual unfoldment 
uh, grew to 200,000 subscribers and now has 20 million views and of course there's a lot of work in that but there was certainly no aspiration to grow it in that respect um, of course I've learned a trick or two about hopefully how to present and uh, grow indeed grow a channel but it was surrendering the goal of it being successful that seemed to uh, release it like a hot air balloon to lift off. 11 low overheads um, I won't uh, give the game away now in a following video I will share with you how much money per month I will be saving we're all faced with uh, doubling or tripling even energy costs and uh, it looks like my tiny house will be solar powered and um, wood fired it, uh, I expect it will have a wood burning stove the other very practical consideration number 12 is that um, I am financially not in a position uh, to buy a property and uh, rents uh, Bakewell is a very popular um, tourist and visitor destination and rents around here are uh, expensive and going up so the cost of living and rent squeeze does force your hand into um, looking at changing your overheads and outgoings and as I say on another video I will be giving the numbers on how that works out for me 13 um, when I am not living in said tiny house um, I will be able to I hope I'll be able to rent it out and finally 14 pass it on this means two things really um, pass on the ethos of living more simply not necessarily off-grid not necessarily in a, a tiny house but simply um, individually taking making a choice I, I, I often say to anybody who's considering for example a job move or a career move I, I, and they say well but I, I can't because and then it's usually to do with money um, or perfectly sensible reasons but I often say annoyingly it's just a choice so um, hopefully by me making just a choice to move off grid to a tiny house uh, will be an encouragement to some as I've gone around looking for a place and and uh, talking about it with others there's a universal approval and enthusiasm and applause for the initiative and you, you can tell in people's eyes and voice and conversation that uh, it's something that they feel that they would really like to do perhaps uh, perhaps not right now but next in fact we have some visitors to meditate with John uh, this week and one of them um, uh, who happens to be uh, he both, he's employed in the corporate world in uh, technology but is also an ordained Zen monk he is very clear he and his wife are very clear that their life pl plan is to save enough money um, to go off grid or to set up a tiny house community well I've, I've just done it without saving up the money uh, I'm just going to do it anyway more practically pass it on means that if it if it doesn't suit me or if it doesn't work out uh, I can pass it on or uh, in other words sell it and find another way of living I'm not a big fan of planning a next um, it seems to me that the best way of ensuring that the future works out is to surrender S surrender plans expectations of course we have them that's and there's nothing wrong with them 
but I, I would like to say I don't live in the next. Um, and there's enough happening in the now <laughs> to, to keep us <laughs> pleasantly occupied, shall we say. One little example, maybe, if it's not too rich to say, um, I registered on this writing course with Natalie Goldberg, uh, purely out of interest, but it so inspired me. Six months later, I've published a book about what was happening literally in the moment, my spontaneous writings. Anyway, enough of that. Who wants to live in a tiny house off grid? I do. Let's see how it unfolds moment by moment. Stop the music. Hang on. Um, there's a couple of things I really ought to add, want to add uh, to this uh, video on why I am moving to, hoping to move to a tiny house. I listed uh, 14 reasons uh, and sort of skimmed over them and probably raised as many questions about my reasons as they purported to give skinny answers. So um, who knows if if there are um, one or more of those 14 reasons I'm looking to move off grid to a tiny house and you want me to expand on it a bit because I did skate over a lot of them. For example, number six, apocalypse. Really? So, uh, yes, just hit me up in the description and uh, I may very well do a little bit more of a um, broader consideration of these long thought out reasons to uh, move off grid. Um, the other coda to this video, um, I'm hopeless at self-promotion, believe it or not. Um, uh, so I'm going to break the habits of a lifetime and plug my new book. I don't have a new book out every day, every week, or even every year, but today I do. And uh, you'll find this on my website of thefivepaths.com, thefivepaths.com. And uh, all proceeds of this E45 topical treatments for the human condition, scratches where you itch, rub, rub the anecdotes all over, one a day for 45 days, make your life feel itch-free, hopefully, um, you'll be able to get a copy there, all proceeds to the National Eczema Society. Thank you. And don't forget to hit subscribe. It's extraordinary. Um, Two thirds of people who watch my videos um, are not subscribers. Why? Why not? And hit the bell. Thanks.